Our Perseverance rover takes up residence on Mars, the space station's next commercial resupply mission, and a new date for a commercial crew test flight. A few of the stories to tell you about this week at NASA. The navigation has confirmed that the parachute has deployed and we are seeing significant deceleration. On February 18th, our Mars 2020 Perseverance rover mission safely touched down on Mars. Touch on confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. The rover landed in Jezero Crater, a region targeted for the excellent opportunity it presents to accomplish the rover's primary goal of finding signs of past microbial life. Within minutes, the rover's first images from Mars reached Earth, confirming Perseverance was A-OK. -okay. And even more images followed, including amazing views of the rover's descent captured by our Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, and stunning views from onboard the lander, showing how descent appeared from the rover's point of view. You have to somehow believe that you can do it, or else you'd never try to put a car on the surface of Mars, right? It's crazy. But there really is no good way to describe that moment when it's over and you hear those words, uh, touchdown confirmed. This is the most advanced NASA rover to make the nearly 300 million mile trip to Mars. It's loaded with groundbreaking technology to help pave the way for future human exploration of the red planet. This includes the ability to collect and leave cached samples of Martian rock and regolith that a future mission being planned by NASA and the European and Space Agency could retrieve and bring back to Earth for study. This mission is amazing on its own. Science, technology, and caching samples to bring back to Earth. But it's also part of our bigger exploration plans, right? Which involve preparing uh, for eventual human missions to Mars. While Perseverance works to characterize the region's geology and past climate, there are also plans for the Ingenuity experimental helicopter to make the first controlled flight on another planet. Having a flying robotic explorer could be a huge benefit for a human mission on Mars. Being able to fly will enable us to get to places that we cannot get to with rovers and astronauts, like sites of steep cliffs, deep inside crevices, areas of high scientific interest. It will be game changing. Perseverance will undergo several weeks of testing before it begins its two-year science investigation of Mars. The February 20th liftoff of Northrop Grumman's Antares rocket and Cygnus spacecraft from our Wallops flight facility marked the start of the company's 15th resupply mission to the International Space Station for NASA. The Cygnus, named after late NASA mathematician Katherine Johnson, is loaded with about 8,000 pounds of scientific research, crew supplies, and hardware for the station crew. An uncrewed Russian Progress supply ship arrived at the space station early Wednesday after launching from Kazakhstan on February 14th with just over a ton of nitrogen, water, and propellant. The Progress will be used to detach a Russian docking module later this year to prepare for the arrival of a new multi-purpose laboratory module. NASA and Boeing are now targeting no earlier than Friday, April 2nd for the launch of Orbital Flight Test 2, or OFT-2, the company's second uncrewed flight test of the CST-100 Starliner spacecraft to the International Space Station. OFT-2 is an end-to-end -end test to prove the Starliner system is ready to begin flying astronauts to and from the space station as part of NASA's commercial crew program. A lightweight robotic crane first designed, built, and tested at our Langley Research Center more than a decade ago is being upgraded with a suite of quick interchange tools, giving it Swiss Army knife-like capabilities that could prove quite useful on future missions to the moon. It can be used as a hoist or forklift to lift payloads weighing as much as an elephant or for jobs requiring a bit more dexterity, such as scooping regolith or welding. The technology is also scalable to fit any size lander, vehicle, or surface application. That's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on the web at nasa.gov.